Can you see my screen now? Yeah. Is it full screen? No, it's not full screen. So I'll probably have to close on my... Uh... <clears throat> Sorry, I have too many windows open at the same time. <laughs> okay, let's try. Like this. The video was is without sound, right? So yeah. yeah. That's good. There are some figures on the screen uh, that are not part from the video. I don't know. We are what? still checked or? <clears throat> You're no longer seeing it, right? What were the figures? It was like the Blake square. It is new. Like, yeah. Maybe that's the transmission of the file. Camille, do you mind trying it from your screen? I can also try maybe. It's a little bit slow. It's not working. Okay, come on, maybe you can try, you can let Maria try it. And if it's yeah. getting too slow, we'll just skip it. So. Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat>
Okay, hello everyone. My name is Lila Kudelian. I'm the guest curator at Residency Unlimited. Um, thank you for those joining us for the second chapter of Meets and Bounds, a new series of monthly conversations with the laureates of the Young Visual Artists Awards program, YVAA. Uh, YVAA is a network of 12 national awards that provide artists from Eastern, Central and Southern Europe with a two month residency hosted by Residency Unlimited in New York. The program takes place on an annual basis since 2015 and is supported by Trustful Mutual Understanding. As you may know from the previous talk, the title of the program Meets and Bounds uh, comes from a term used in cartography and in real estate and refers to the method of um, surveying land that has been used for many centuries for the definition of general border boundaries. Um, the idea behind our program is to outline um, the contact zones and to understand the reason that either create distinct places or quite often pull the regions apart and enable the formation of borders, mental, economical, infrastructural, or other. Uh, today I'm joined by Yelena Micic and Maria Nalbantova uh, to talk about the rituals of cleansing in our societies and to learn more about the fascinating objects and installations that both um, Yelena and Maria create from these seemingly mundane materials. And before diving in, I would like to thank the team of Residency Unlimited for helping to organize the event and to the Trust for, for Mutual Understanding for their support and making this wonderful artist exchange program possible. <clears throat> now, let me introduce the artist, Maria Nalbantova, who you already just met through a video that uh, we watched at the beginning. She is the winner of 2020 Baza Award in Bulgaria. Uh, Maria studied illustration and graphic design at the National Academy of Arts in Sofia, Bulgaria, and at the University of Granada in Spain. She is currently based in uh, Sofia, primarily. Uh, Maria also won a special award for the Stoyan Kambara Foundation in 2020. In 2019, she was selected for the scholarship of the Cultural Perspectives Foundation, and her works um, Isobars and Lightning are part of the collection of the Sofia City Art Gallery, um, and several of her recent artworks are also in private collections. Um, her solo exhibitions uh, over the last few years uh, took place in different galleries in uh, Bulgaria, um, also at the Goethe Institute in Bulgaria, um, and um, and at Vasca Manuela Gallery. Um, and Swimming Bull Gallery, among others. And uh, we also are joined today by Jelena Micic, who is the winner of 2021 Mangelas Award in Serbia. Um, Jelena studied sculpture at the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna and has an MA in philosophy and a degree in Scandinavian languages from the University of Belgrade. Uh, Jelena lives and works in Vienna. Uh, her practice is informed by the collaboration and dialogues with blue collar and manual labor workers whose voices she amplifies through her artworks. Um, she's also interested in socio-political aspects of color and color systems. Um, and she's the founder of the informal group Umetni. Um, Milena was awarded with multiple fellowships and awards and her selected exhibitions took place at the Vienna Museum, uh, Musa Stadt Gallery in Vienna, uh, the KSG Belgrade, at the Austrian Sculpture Park um, um, exhibition uh, in Bratislava, and she also had many gallery shows in Vienna, Belgrade, Novi Sad, and Ljubljana, among others. Um, so um, for those of us who are joining uh, now or will join later, I hope we can also have a Q&A session at the end, but now we're going to dive in the, um, the conversation between me and Maria and Milena. And um, I uh, came across both of your portfolios around the same time this summer um, and was very impressed by how much speaking from the material happens in each of your practice. Um, as has been noted in the promo for today's talk, um, the focus in your installations, performances and sculptures quite often falls on the liquids, toxins, detergents and other synthetic ingredients. So I'm very excited to learn more today about 
your your own fascination with whether it would be like um, cotton swabs, uh, mashes, brushes, and all, all kinds of soaps or chemical substances that you end up using in those works over the last few years. Uh, most importantly, uh, I also would like to point that you have done projects that highlight the conditions of labor in the countries where you live and work, and also the ambivalence of the materials that can be at the same time protective or toxic, depending on the role a particular person plays in the society and, and those who are using and have to engage with the materials on the daily basis. So Maria, um, I would like to start uh, by asking you first about the recent site-specific installation you did at Uni Credit Bank Studio in Sofia in Bulgaria, which was entitled A Good Deal. Um, for this project, you used um, soap, different pigments and water to paint directly on the glass wall, if I understand it right or correct me. Um, I wanted to learn more uh, how, uh, about how this formula for this project came together and yeah, look at the images. Thank you, Lilia. I'm happy to be here and thank you very much for the invitation. A Good Deal is a site-specific installation using uh, the soap painting technique and uh, created for the space of Unicredit Studio in Sofia. This, mm, the special thing at the space is uh, that one wall, it's a mirror wall. And the mirror wall there uh, has been transformed into a canvas on which I painted with melted soap. Uh, sponges and water. The applied soap um, has been deeply layered, forming frozen uh, foam bubbles. Uh, and throughout seven gaps and a few cracks, we can see our own mirror reflection becoming part of the picture. Uh, and the sound, the sound of uh, withdrawn cash uh, from next door ATMs becomes uh, the soundtrack of the installation. The question, um, the, the work explores questions such as uh, where is the place of the artist in the market economy today? What are the possible conditions for negotiating art? And in the context of contemporary art, uh, what does a good meal, uh, a good deal means. We can see now some pictures from the Unicredit Studio. And for how long was it on view at their space? It was around two months there. Yes. Did the work change over those two months visually? It was frozen. Uh, it was like frozen at that soaping moment and mm -hmm. then we just clean it and uh, the mirror uh, was uh, back <laughs> at, the, at the place without mm -hmm. soap anymore. Mm -hmm. um, Elena, you have a similar project that you did many years ago in 2016. There was a project called Maintaining the Pictures. Um, and I see it somehow aligning with uh, Maria's installation. Um, um, can you explain us how that work came together and the ideas behind it? I will start with sharing my screen. Mm -hmm. So this is the work that um, uh, we kind of, uh, in our preparational conversation, uh, wanted to relate to Maria's work. And um, this um, series of works, basically, or I would even say the body of work, uh, called Maintaining the Pictures, or in Serbian, Održavanje Slika. Uh, it was a series of uh, <laughs> performances that were dealing with the parallel between the uh, gesture of painting and cleaning. So this um, um, set of works uh, thematize my uh, working ex experience. Um, when I came to Vienna, I started my first employment as the cleaning uh, woman in uh, different companies. And um, while, of course, I was studying uh, art in parallel, 
So there was a huge discrepancy between this highly elitist um, possibility of studying at the art academy, which was at that point also free for third country nationals, which is a very interesting term that uh, I am aware that you don't use so much in the US. Um, I kind of figured out that, you know, like there is a parallel in the action uh, that I do uh, in both of my roles. And that's why I took a mop or sponge or rag and started cleaning, painting the paintings. <laughs> and that's why the title uh, in German, Putzmalerei, would actually mean the cleaned paintings. Mm -hmm. So they have a form of a specific um, cleaning uh, like object that you use, like either a sponge, in this case uh, a mop. So this is like okay. somehow the initial work that was connecting both of my uh, roles in the society and uh, this will somehow continue uh, in the later works that we will discuss. Mm -hmm. And can you click uh, on the close-up picture so we can see it enlarged maybe on the screen? I guess, I don't know, just for me, but I can't really see it, the whole folder. Yeah, I mean, I can do like this, but it's... Um, it's a vertical one. Mm -hmm. So it really um, shows the form of a mop um, put in the painting. I mean, I didn't select that many photos, so I just kind of thought that we just talk more about specific uh, aspects mm -hmm. of works. That's why I didn't prepare that many photos. So yeah. I mean, I guess um, this is somehow the work that I was... Uh, um, kind of developing at first, but then uh, if I may share or if I may continue with some things, mm -hmm. uh, I would actually um, like to just one second. Uh, now I cannot back, uh, get back anymore to my very <laughs> yes. Um, all right, so there is uh, some words that we can also relate to Maria's works in a way. And that is, um, and just one second, this work, okay. Um, do you see it or not yet? Not yet. <clears throat> not yet, okay. Just one second again. Mm -hmm. It's hard with programs <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> especially with full screen. So the way that I collected my information, I mean, in parallel to Maria, like she has this cleaning process and my process somehow continues in sampling different aspects of our, um, let's say, living environment. In that sense, this is a work that um, uses this um, so-called color catchers. Um, those are the pre-fabricated papers that you put in the washing machine so that you could theoretically mix the uh, white and um, black uh, clothes together by washing it once. But I kind of misused this um, chemical um, paper for the washing machine and started sampling different wor uh, different things from my household. Like, And then it starts with a mascara, different clothes, bags, um, alcohol, uh, drinks, flowers, so like uh, completely different natural and both natural and industrial things that I would find in my household. And in a sense, I when I was kind of explaining this work, I would always say that it's a kind of um, household color theory, which mm -hmm. I find really interesting. Um, and also one more work in this context that we kind of um, started um, uh, talking about in, in the preparational conversation was uh, the work that um, also has to do with this motion of, uh, notion of sampling uh, or um, kind of um, collecting in a sense uh, and this work is titled um, Parallel uh, uh, Palette of My Homeland uh, very ironically, actually, <laughs> where um, I extracted different uh, soil types from the region where I come from, which is basically, as we discussed, very close to where Maria comes from, just on the other side of the mountain, which is really interesting. So basically the landscape that we are thematizing in both of our works is a very similar one. 
and also geographically. Um, and every uh, single color, I mean, <laughs> of the soil that we see has its use. So, for example, the uh, this whitish one or the first one is called beluga, the white soil, and it was actually used. It's very soapy uh, when you put water in it. So, um, with it, you actually like my grandmother, for example, mm -hmm. so some 50 years ago, they were using it for uh, washing clothes. The second one uh, was called Lescun. It was for uh, building bricks. Uh, and then, for example, to make it short, the very last one, this kind of grayish one, uh, is also soapy. They use it as a shampoo, as a natural shampoo 50 years ago. That's incredible. So you um, took them from, like, I imagine they are from the regions, like, literally close to each other, but... So yes, they're, the they're very specialist. close within the mm -hmm. maybe like um, <laughs> let's say 20 kilometers. Uh huh. And to apply it onto a canvas, did you have to use any binding materials also? I use the binding materials. I mean, I always like uh, to work with this acrylic paint because I like the way that it uh, structures like this uh, plastic sterile. Um, Thing. So in my in my works it's like uh, this na the a relation between the natural material and the industrial material is um, it, it, I think this is a interesting uh, connection because I would you know if I would have to choose between those two I would even if I would use the natural materials as in this work um, color catcher with this mm -hmm. um, color catcher um, papers I would always somehow include the industrial moment or chemically prepared prepared moment um, consumerist moment into um, sampling for example the natural pigments mm -hmm. interesting so yeah since you mentioned Maria's project drought let's <clears throat> look at those images and uh, see what Maria does with the landscape and how she reflects on the invasion of concrete monsters into those natural habitats and um, how these different material uh, recipes? I, I was wondering, uh, lo looking at the sculptures that you made, and thought that these are basically different recipes that commemorate vanishing waters in different areas around Bulgaria. <clears throat> in uh, 2021, I made drought. Um, it consists of uh, several objects and video. Um, and it is a work uh, that is focused on uh, the question how a protest turns into a ritual or how a ritual transforms into a protest. Uh, the work is made in four different locations next to water bodies uh, where drought is both a shadow of the past and an aspect uh, of the present. Uh, in this project, we see a lake, a river, a puddle, um, puddle in a depopulated village, and uh, uh, the sea. Uh, in the places uh, shown in the video, one can see the ritual of soap preparation, uh, in uh, which I used um, water from the place, oil, sodium hydroxide, and some ingredients uh, from the surrounding area. And for example, the soap uh, from the seaside consists uh, of sand, algae, and uh, concrete because of the huge illegal construction uh, in, the, in that place at the seashore. But um, it's a symbol of many more quite similar occasions. Uh, the ingredients uh, such as soil, water, um, sand, seaweed, the river gravel, rust from trails uh, and concrete um, have been uh, extracted from those particular locations and uh, become part of the soap uh, installation. And uh, if we, yeah, if we see the uh, in the picture, uh, the um, dam soap uh, consists uh, water and soil from um, almost dry dams to dena, uh, sodium hydroxide and vegetable oil. That 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 is kind of like the most uh, popular soap uh, preparing recipe. Uh, water, 
sodium hydroxide and vegetable oil. And I'm using uh, in the work uh, all that ingredients. And uh, in the river, uh, in the soap from the river, uh, it consists water uh, and river gravel, uh, which is um, uh, legally, let's say, uh, used from the river Maritza for road uh, construction. Um, and again, sodium hydroxide and vegetable oil. And um, the puddle soap uh, consists uh, water from a puddle, dry plants, and rust from the displaced village of Popovo, now, uh, now village of uh, the trailers. Um, and the sea soap uh, consists uh, sea water from Alepu Beach uh, construction site and concrete, algae, uh, sodium hydroxide and vegetable oil. That's the recipe. And just a little clarification that I wanted to do about the puddle. So um, not cl clarification, but the question about the puddle. It used to be a lake or? Mm, no, it's is uh, that an from, industrial? Uh, it's it's puddle uh, in the area where um, <laughs> that that village Popovo uh um in was uh, in the past in uh, uh, 1953 mm -hmm. then um the village was displayed uh, displaced and now you can see there one can see um just trailers and uh puddles Um, do you both have noticed any like fundamental differences whenever you work with like source natural materials, organic materials, and um, versus when you work with uh, inorganic materials and chemicals that have to be obtained from specific suppliers? Um, how are these two modes aligned um, for you? Maybe specifically in relation to these two uh, bodies of work. Uh, drought and the pellet of my homeland. I mean, as I already said, it definitely there is a mix. Like I think today, completely natural, as we call it, natural. And what is nature today? I mean, in this uh, in the twenty first century, I think the notion is a bit expanded. So I think like um, either we understand acrylic uh, binder as <laughs> natural yeah. or we say that uh, it has to include some part of the industrial or kind of human made uh, aspect so i think it's really hard like today to uh, say that uh, it's completely natural in some way in, in the same way as like for example 50 years ago the uh, grandmas were using some of this soil for washing their hair because there was nothing else to do. Now, I think the now it's interesting that actually the only the richest class of people is able to uh, afford this kind of um, organic products. So something which was really uh, reserved for the people like uh, from the nature directly because this was the only source now is only restricted to the people with high income. And it's something I find really interesting. Mm -hmm. This has come through branding and a whole different perspective towards holistic living, right? And the privilege of investing time in selecting the products you use. <clears throat> um, okay, since we saw some of those sculptures, soap sculptures by Maria's on tile pedestal, I thought we can now transition to another um, somehow similar bodies of work that um, you both recently produced. Uh, for Maria, it is a project uh, um, that took place inside the empty swimming pool. And uh, one of it is called Score for an Empty Swimming Pool, right? Which was a performance, as you say, informed by scientific research on the slime mold. Um, and it, it got you thinking about the new definitions of touching in the current environment. Um, so I would like to hear more from you, Maria, about uh, the background and how this project came together and how you think this score for the performance you created can be later used in other locations or other abandoned swimming pools. 
Um, thank you. Just uh, um, um, uh, one thing, uh, the, the score, uh, that, that work was um, part of um, uh, one um, project uh, called uh, Possible Institution. And uh, this uh, one, the workshop and uh, the concept was... Uh, um, created uh, of uh, Yasin Vasilev. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, he working a lot with contemporary dance uh, in, in that field and he's screenwriter. Uh, and uh, yeah, he's a, a great artist. Uh, but my work um, I, I was institutional leisure code mm -hmm. uh, is a site specific uh, uh, installation created in the framework of that project possible institution uh, organized by the place called swimming pool um, the possible institution um, is a project about uh, institutions real desired past uh, fantastic um, it was a long term uh, project that uh, started in a series of online meetings with uh, participants and um, then uh, continued uh, with workshops um, exhibition performances um, and uh, space interventions uh, my work institutional uh, leisure uh, is uh, located um, in that place, swimming pool, at the empty outdoor swimming pool on the roof uh, of a building in uh, the center of Sofia. Um, and I made a field for leisure and uh, discussions about um, what exactly leisure means. Uh, the ground of the pool uh, is covered with uh, artificial grass. Uh, and there are benches in the Tetris block shape, uh, shapes. Uh, the audience can lie on the grass uh, or sit on uh, these Tetris benches. Um, very often we arrange something, including our uh, free time. Um, and I was asking myself, uh, how do we spend our free time? Um, and when we speak about uh, work and uh, different uh, practices, so we can speak about uh, the rhythm between working time and free time. And sometimes we need space for leisure. Um, great. So hearing this, um, it seems to me that, Yelena, your project called Twisting by the Pool which brought you Mangala's award um, this year and is currently installed in its second iteration um, in another exhibition. In the Czech um, Cultural yeah. Center recently. I'm so happy for this invitation and that I was being, uh, that I have been able to develop the work again or to uh, reconstruct it or construct it from the beginning. So I will um, share my screen now and show you this work that we are talking about. Um, so the work, so this is a detail of the work uh, called, again ironically, Twisting by the Pool. It's a famous so song by um, a rock uh, band um, Dire Straits. And um, so this small pool that I uh, created and recreated then again, contains a specific substance which um, somehow comes uh, from um, a time when you hear the detail of this substance uh, which is um, a very interesting substance actually it's um, a cleaning agent that I myself was using while I was working as a cleaning lady in Vienna um, the color of a specific substance which is basically uh, an acid that uh, the um, workers use every day, every morning, to be more precise. Um, there's a theory around this whole um, color, the use of color here. Um, I will just show one more work here in this context. This is a work that I did before, the um, Twisting by the Pool, and uh, it's called Farbenlehre, or the color theory in German. Um, 
So um, there are four colors used in professional cleaning. So I got to know this information um, during the performing this labor <laughs> uh, every morning and usually also evening. Um, there is this color, like four color system, and each of the colors is assigned to a specific uh, type of the room. So, for example, uh, the red cloth uh, or cleaning rag, and um, a red cleat or variation of red um, cleaning agent is used for the toilet and the tiles and everything around the toilet. Uh, the yellow one is used for the bathroom the blue one for the office and the green one for the kitchen or respectively also for um, some parts of the hospital depending on which kind of so-called object you are cleaning so um, the the use of like the color of this um, acid you see that it started eating up these divisions between the tiles uh, it's so strong um, I think now you see finally how it was presented and the, this relation with the pool uh, moment in both of the works. So it was just left there for for it to dry and to evaporate and actually um, it is kind of uh, interesting that uh, the people are actually now using the masks all the time. So this was the second use of the masks. It was actually uh, very important that they use the masks because uh, the, the cleaning agent is so strong, it stays in your nose for a long time. Um, and actually, even when it dries and you want to clean it out and make the pool completely uh, clean um, and new, uh, it starts smelling again. So it's an acid that uh, people really use in their cleaning. It's a very specific de detergent. You could buy standardized. But the problem that I kind of saw in this is that um, it's it could be used but in the very special conditions and not every day with no protection, no gloves, um, no glasses and uh, no mask at that point, you know, for example in 2016 or 17 for myself as well. So this is something which is, which I would like to point to in a way. The this use of this material is uh, highly problematic and it's usually used by uh, female workers, mostly undocumented, and there is no protection which goes along with using this. So my idea was to expose the viewers to this specific cleaning agent and see how they react and the, their reaction is when they don't know it, they think, oh, it's so nice, uh, so nice uh, and beautiful neonish uh, pink color. But then when they know and they f when they figure out or, or when they get to know what it is, they go back from it. No one likes to know these things. No one wants to be in contact with this anymore. But I'm somehow forcing them to be in this direct uh, danger as many of the people who basically prepare their working spaces. Okay, maybe now when the home office is happening, but the people whom they never met, but the people who were preparing their working spaces every single morning. Uh, when installing it in the gallery, did you have to think, or you or the curator, about um, any rules for the gallery workers as far as the maximum amount of time they can stay or the distance they are advised to? Well, it was really yeah. close not to use it at all or not to be able to install it at all, especially in Serbia. <laughs> and uh, the solution was that um, it's not that dangerous unless, unless people really touch it because it's the only um, form in which it is dangerous is uh, spraying it. So the evaporation is not so problematic, but spraying it, as for example I had to do and my colleagues had to uh, do in order to save this cleaning agent for the company, is a um, very specific, uh, <clears throat> let's say, act of using it. So it wasn't so dangerous and we also agreed to um, turn, um, so to, to open the, the windows, but it nevertheless was also smelling outside. Okay, and uh, Yelena, you also mentioned that these tiles you used for the pool are made in the Bulgarian factory? Yes, for the second um, 
um, showing of the work uh, currently in Vienna now. Um, we bought the uh, tiles that are produced in Bulgaria, which is a very interesting thing because Maria has a um, um, comment on this. I, <laughs> I I have to think about this. So uh, I think that um, the, the the thing with the Bulgarian tiles is, I mean, they are good and cheap, and that's why on uh, Austrian market you you have them, you know, like as a as an option. But uh, I also understood that there is some cultural aspect uh, to actually using these Bulgarian tiles in Bulgaria. And maybe Maria could tell us more about this because uh, I didn't know about this, but my uh, tiles are from Bulgaria. Yeah, Maria, if you could tell us, um, if you can look at the images of your installation clans uh, and the pedestals um, yeah. and the story and the, how they are categorized, the tales itself. That uh, uh, tiles that I'm using uh, in the work are um, made in um, uh, 1981 uh, in uh, Izida fabric. Uh, so there are three types with uh, defects. Oh, uh, so you can uh, both uh, uh, tiles with defects without or in the middle. So there are three types. And for me, it was really interesting to found uh, a lot of uh, tiles in uh, my uh, village house. Um, and I really often working with uh, found uh, objects and materials. And always uh, I found uh, a connections uh, between the context of that they uh, of, of the context of my work and all that objects and Always I'm using uh, the, the materials uh, in relation with, with the context. Um, cleanse, uh, I, I made cleanse in uh, 2020 and uh, that's the work uh, which was part of uh, Baza uh, uh, Awards for Contemporary Art in uh, Sofia City Art Gallery. Um, Cleanse is a complex installation uh, framed as a cleaning program. Uh, we saw the video, so it's uh, involving a video and uh, uh, various uh, object, uh, let's say devices. Uh, it explores topics uh, related to ethics and the hygiene of human consciousness. The work is a fictional program uh, divided in three phases, uh, which can be followed um, in a seven minute uh, video, demonstration video. Uh, the steps include uh, cleansing the feet, hands and face, uh, followed by uh, soaping, brushing, uh, washing and wiping. And then we see an alchemy situation. The wastewater after washing changes its structure uh, and becomes certain substance uh, that um, uh, elicits a personal benefit. The work is made of um, hybrid uh, appliance uh, uh, consisting of organic and synthetic elements um, that form cleaning devices and that tails, uh, um, synthetic fibers, uh, stones, uh, wood. Um, the devices uh, are used uh, in, in the cleaning procedures uh, demonstrated in the video, exploring topics related to corruption, lack of dignity uh, and abuse of power. Um, the compound of soap and asphalt for example, turns into golden particles. So asphalt uh, becomes gold. Uh, that is connected with um, the enormous corruption of building the roads and highways in Bulgaria. The compound of um, soap and fingerprints turns uh, into white gloves, uh, protected us from leaving a trace. Uh, what kind of trace do we leave? And the compound of uh, soap and mirror uh, turns into grayscale chess 
pieces and uh, remove uh, the image of power. So this is a really like poetic statement about sensitive political issues that you're making it here, right? Relating to yeah. corruption and the abuse of power. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the image in the video where you uh, put your hand through the brushes as it's metal brushes, the tunnel of metal brushes. Yes, the picture that we are looking now are from an uh, exhibition uh, in Plovdiv. Uh, that was a uh, second display for the work. Uh, it was in the um, group uh, exhibition in uh, Kapana Gallery, curated by, uh, by um, Natalie Hoyos and uh, Reino Chumahir. And uh, uh, the exhibition uh, uh, title was Us and Them. Mm -hmm. Um, and from here, if we could go to Yelena's uh, uh, works where she repurposes plastic. Um, uh, Yelena, can you show us um, some of the images that you prepared? I will, um, but to talk about I would, your like, to, your... I would mm -hmm. like to continue on this uh, on your uh, hint around uh, poetics and non poetics. <laughs> Uh, because I think this is a, this is an interesting thing. Um, one of my comments when I was looking at both of our works was that um, um, there is like this huge uh, poetic and uh, ethnographic imagery in uh, Maria's works. Um, and in my case, it's a bit different perspective, even though there are some formally similar things. Um, in my works, somehow my um, artistic and my, let's say, um, social or existential work is intertwined. And in that sense, uh, I like I wouldn't say that like my work is at all poetic, for example. I think it's very um, kind of critical in a sense, even though uh, sometimes very formal, but I think there is a... Uh, there is some disturbing moment around the works that I like to um, kind of um, put into the, the focus <laughs> in a sense sometimes, even though, I mean, as I also explained the work uh, Twisting by the Pool, there is like this nice color, formal, uh, clean, sterile, but actually when you know what it is, then you are not so happy anymore to be in room with this thing. Uh, on, and now we can go on and symbolically say or poetically say that you are not comfortable um, to be together with these persons that perform this labor in, in a sense that will be a poetic uh, kind of um, um, understanding of my work in a sense. Um, but still, I, you know, I insisted on using this very expensive <laughs> um, gallon of um, cleaning agent because you know it's actually um, first of all it's regulated who is allowed to buy it <laughs> and for which purposes and second of all you are faced with it directly like there is no board there's nothing to protect you except this moment where you actually have to wear a mask because of the ongoing pandemic so I show um, the work that we um, are talking about so I share my screen I think this is the best option to do it <laughs> yeah. so this is uh, I guess the work that Lilia wanted uh, me to show at this moment um, those are the misused <laughs> or uh, transformed uh, either plastic or organic nets from fruit and vegetables that I was collecting throughout the years uh, each of the colors um, relate in a way to the content of um, each of the nets and in that sense you know the lemon is yellow like zucchini is not like um, it's always in green uh, the garlic has like a variation for example it's either uh, pink or purple uh, onions are always in orange oranges are in orange so it's, you could kind of trace the also like uh, my diet in a way, when you look at this, um, like put together, like a lot of like hand, so hand work, so 
really manufactured uh, and uh, co connected uh, works uh, or, or small pieces. Uh, I think what, what I like to somehow bring in uh, here is that um, along with the moment that uh, like these semi-transparent walls divide the space or open the space, in other words, because they're semi-transparent, um, most of the material that I use here is basically um, plastic because the plastic uh, is used for products which are imported and cheap ones and the uh, uh, cotton nets which I, I only have a few of them are uh, for organic products products and there is a difference or a huge difference in in between like the quality and the price of the products that I was using in my own um, you know like uh, as my eating habit and in that sense this work could also show um, in a way my um, you know like uh, economic state so this is how I was relating plastic with um, in okay and then opposing to cotton uh, together with exposing my own like uh, social state because you know I definitely am part of the class that cannot afford to uh, buy organic food so um, there is one thing because we're talking a lot about I would you know I would somehow call Maria's works um, rather demonstrations than performances in a sense and um, which comes to uh, this moment of um, another parallel between our works and there is definitely the this um, the, like we can call it performative demonstration <laughs> if you like of um, the materials that I usually uh, use in my works and here this was my diploma presentation last year uh, in 2020 like really <clears throat> November um, during a pandemic um, where I put all of the plastic mostly materials that I use um, for my works, for um, something like this, <laughs> for example, I will come back to that photo later on, uh, or something like this. So these like uh, garbage bags come in different colors, and they have like I don't know either like 60 liters or 100 liters. So there are some dimensions that you can take in consideration when you look uh, some of these works. But what I kind of thought was really interesting and uh, having in mind that uh, my ongoing show in Vienna is going to be closed uh, because of the lockdown that we are having uh, from Monday on, um, these shelves that were sometimes like this uh, gathered material on like uh, I kind of tried to transpose into the shelves themselves so like uh, it's not anymore as you were seeing so I come back shortly to this photo where I had materials on the shelves I really wanted to make the shelves out of the specific collected and consumed material uh, be it like cotton buds or um, like um, uh, bottle rings or even like candy wraps And the wraps are used in those weaved um, objects or the candy wraps? Um, the candy wraps are like, I think the thing with my work is that um, it's, it's a, <laughs> a discrepancy between the minimalism and the maximalism in a sense because they're like, you have like thousands <laughs> literally of small candy wraps that had to be touched and uh, manufactured or like really elaborated through you know my um, labor artistic call it artistic call it reproductive I mean it's sometimes it's definitely more than just paid lab you know it, it usually doesn't pay off but um, I, I think there is this discrepancy between the, the aesthetics of my works and, and the actual amount of labor one needs to perform, in, uh, to, to construct these works and uh, like this is some some invisible aspect of, of, aspect of my works that um, in a direct way demonstrate the, um, as we said like um, the labor conditions 
that artists are actually, I mean, to come to the beginning of your announcement, um, that artists or women or like um, different categories use in order to produce something or create a value. Or, but there is a, a huge amount of invisible labor that we don't take for, like, we just take it for granted. We don't appreciate it enough. And um, I think this is the thing that, like, or one characteristic of my work that always repeats everywhere to put in a view the amount of this either uh, like in, in invisible work that someone performs usually f instead of us and for us so that uh, we could go on doing art for example yes and i find it's really profound how you you know emphasize this in like you, you make us look at the materials and think about all the connotations they have in a social and political sense and economical sense so at this point i would like to invite any questions from the audience if we have them and meanwhile uh, i also wanted to ask maria um whether uh, Yelena just talked about how she collects a uh, lot of plastic uh, for the immense installations that she produces on a large scale uh, maria are you um, interested in any particular materials at the moment or um, yeah if you would like to share with us some ideas for the current project that you work on in the studio at the moment um, something special at the moment I'm continuing to in investigate um, um, that kind of um, um topic of the hygiene so yeah in that way um it's interesting to me to depends of depends of the project but um um even now uh, so most people wash their hands every day and with the pandemic due to the pandemic um, crisis um uh, it happens more often that we received the instructions uh, how to wash our hands properly. And I'm really interested in, in that kind of uh, material connected with everyday routines. Um, because if we do it, um, uh, it is a sign of our care uh, and the responsibility for uh, the people around us. And, Washing uh, your hands means trying not only to protect uh, yourself, but uh, also others. So in that relation, all uh, that kind of material like soap, brushes, but uh, at the same time uh, related uh, with uh, some uh, social, political, specific, specific uh, topics, that are somehow local, but at the same time, I'm sure there are a lot of places with the same issues. And uh, this is something that, uh, um, that I'm working a lot in this field. Um, because on one hand, uh, it's uh, related to our personal development, but uh, on the other hand, uh, to our common existence as a society. And for me, that's important thing uh, and field uh, for discussions and uh, thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the cinematic form that you often take with your projects, um, is that, has that been an interest for you for many years or just more recently? It started uh, in uh, ninety um, in uh, nine uh, yeah nineteen uh, nineteen ninety nine ninety eight I think uh, three years ago mm -hmm. I started to work on uh, that topic and uh, the first work uh, was dry hands maybe I can I can show. Uh, a picture just mm -hmm. a moment i can comment something and ask at the same time while you are searching for the <laughs> picture i think there is a very interesting relation to water 
somehow in your work in many different ways like from hygiene to somehow gathering different like even like human specimens or fuse like I, I don't know how I would like you said like everyday routines um, but um, I think it's I definitely see it more in relation to uh, saving the water so there is a huge uh, in a sense ecologic interest in your work around uh, around saving water in a sense be it like uh, used or uh, uh, I don't know, like maybe even as we saw in the photos, it's like not completely clean, but like somehow this uh, consciousness that water will <laughs> like somehow is slowly disappearing from the um, from the earth, basically, and that you have this urge to save it somehow. So I think that like um, this this is a striking characteristic that I somehow see in your work. Yes, I echo that. Mm -hmm. True, yeah, absolutely. But at the same time, yeah, it's uh, uh, natural, but something uh, um, that is part of uh, our uh, social uh, uh, world. Not, it's both, like physical and mental. Always, like, that, can, that relation is important for me. Uh, okay, so now just to see dry hands, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, uh, that uh, was the second display of the work. Um, the first one was in 2019 uh, in Giot Institute in Sofia, uh, curated by Chiara Cartuccia. And um, the, the exhibition was called uh, Good Mirrors Are Not Cheap. And the second display was uh, uh, this year um, in um, Sarajevo Gallery in Plovdiv. Uh, the exhibition was titled In Defense of Solid Material, curated by Veselina Sarieva. Uh, so that's the picture from the second display. So we have... Um, we have towel, uh, gloves, and mirror in, in that work. Stained towel. Right? Is that meant to signify blood or bullet something? Bullet hole? In, uh, they're working glass. Mm -hmm. And uh, dry hands, uh, I think, in that relation are not only clean, but they're also dry. And it's connected with uh, the um again with the conditions and dry hands are protected by working gloves so they are neither dirty nor clean uh for me the important thing in in the work was to uh draw our attention um to finding new connections in uh, uh understanding of uh, labor uh, cleanliness, uh, collective action, uh, social world, and uh, let's say history. And where these uh, gloves collected from the workers? From uh, um, from the flea market. I found them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the, at the flea market. And each uh, glove uh, is like painting because there are a lot of traces on on the surface of it, and it's really interesting to imagine what kind of work uh, because always there is a, a question about our responsibility when we speak about tools how we use them mm -hmm. well do you have any final remarks um, or questions to each other before we wrap up this conversation 
I just have one question for very sh briefly for each uh, of you, both artists. Do you, you are coming uh, for a residency next year in New York. I think it's very um, important just to mention this because the viewers might not be aware of this. Um, and do you have any kind of idea of not what you necessarily want to do in New York, but anything potentially you might be you or you might have an idea already so I'm just curious to know you know from each one of you very succinctly if this is the case when you come for your residency next year and you don't have to by the way but I'm you know I can't help but ask the question because your you know your practices are both so interesting and specific at the same time and in relation to New York, if you have, you know, ideas of what you might want to research, develop. I think the first thing that I would do is to go and see whether you have cotton buds uh, with plastic grip, definitely. This is the first thing that I would do, <laughs> like right at the airport, I think. One of the things, and the second thing, like, um, I would definitely like to uh, meet uh, people who are, on the progressive side of the politics, which is somehow hard to find in the art world, I would say. But we made a list like for Lilia and she will help us out in this uh, concern. So I would like very much like to uh, maybe even organize some uh, like debate, which is like um, something which is investigating the possibility of impact of um, of a cultural work onto society in a sense. I will not necessarily say art, but like um, I think it would be interesting to meet some people that um, are open to share their political political views and uh, to maybe even make some discussions. Like um, you know, maybe not at that point, but later on definitely. So I think it's a good opportunity for us to to come there to see to investigate because I think. Artists need to see the things, first of all. It's kind of hard to um, just kind of, you know, I I'm, can have ideas, but I have to be there and I have to see the things. And once I do that, it will be much easier to answer to that question. Of course, no, no, but I wasn't expecting a specific answer. Although I know now that when you first land in New York, you will be looking for those cotton sticks or buds or whatever. Thank you, Yelena. And what about you, Maria? Uh, I agree, of course, yes. Uh, it's um, uh, a question uh, to be there at place. Uh, at the same time, I'm thinking about the landscape, like everything it's uh, uh, like uh, in the huge uh, dimensions. And that's something uh, that I'm thinking about how we measure that landscape. And I have some ideas, but uh, yeah, I, I hopefully I will be there uh, in February and we can discuss more about it. Totally, totally. Well, thank you so much. Thank you to all of you. you. Lilia, thank you so much as well. And, uh, and see you soon. Thank Here you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Hmm. Bye-bye.